Lairian data and how to manipulate that for analysis. Now, at the microscope, when you're looking at radial area in microfossils through transmitted light or even through scanning electron microscopy, um, in order for to use radial area for paleoenvironmental, paleoceanographic, or paleoclimate research, um, much of the analysis will depend on the different um, amounts of different species in the assemblage because there might be warm water species, cold water species and so on and the relative abundance of those uh, different taxa will give you the information about the, the, the environment, the ocean water temperature and paleoclimate. So as you're going through your slide looking at radial area and identifying them you need to be taking a tally of the different species that you find. And for example, this is a tally sheet that I used in the past um, to record the number of radialarian uh, specimens uh, for each of the different species which were on my predefined um, taxonomic list that I wanted to collect information about these because in some way they will be able to tell me about the environment, about the ocean temperature and about um, the paleoclimate in the long term. So for each one of these species, as I came across them, they were tallied up. Now for, for statistical purposes, I wanted a minimum of 300. So always the total had to, to be 300 or more. Um, now once you've tallied them up, you obviously need to count them up and so on. And at that point, you can um, enter that data into a database or a spreadsheet, um, perhaps in Excel. Um, now I tended to work out um, percentages that each one of these species made up within the assemblage within a particular slide actually on these sheets so I had a record of it and then input that into, into the, the database but you could simply uh, using Excel and its calculation functions enter the raw data into Excel and ask it to calculate the percentages either way that's a necessary step um, for uh, for analysing and uh, the, the radialarian data is to convert it to percentages as long as you've got enough uh, in terms of making a, a statistical minimum if you like and 300 is generally accept 300 specimens is generally accepted as, as the minimum that you would want to count to make your uh, data uh, reliable as possible now this is an example here of an Excel spreadsheet that um, I've created for one of the, the deep sea cores that I've analyzed. Now the way that I've structured this using Excel um, is first of all, and this is vital in, in everything you, you do um, in terms of analyzing radial area, is the sample must have its sample label with the site that it's from, the core, the section in the core, and the centimeters, centimeter interval which that sample came from. So one line in this database represents one sample. Now for this particular, this, this top sample here, um, its label is there, and I've got various information about that sample. For example, its depth down the core, uh, from, from, the, from the seabed downwards, and also its estimated age. And there are various ways in which um, an age can be applied to um, a core sample that may be through various radiocarbon dating uh, or other ways in which uh, for, for particularly for deep sea sediments that are quite old going back several hundreds of thousands of years is to use wiggle matching with astronomical cycles such as the Milankovitch cycles but that's a whole other issue which we can uh, discuss at a later time um, so we've got age there as well but then each one of these columns going down is a different species that relates to the different species on my taxonomic counting uh, sheet. So the percentage or the raw data, whichever you prefer, is inputted then for that sample against each one of those um, species. And so you end up building a database of all the species in that particular sample. But then as you go through your set of samples from a particular core, you will end up with a a long list of samples with their species uh, abundance uh, related to them. So a radial area database for one single core can actually end up producing thousands of bits of data. Now in order to make sense of that, um, first of all, you know, a given species may be able to tell you a little bit about what's going on on its own 
and its abundance down the core may be able to help you do that. So very quickly you can begin to analyze this data by perhaps uh, creating um, graphs from the data. And here's a graph that I've just produced from this data of one particular species, um, which in this case is Botrys grobus auritus. Um, and these graphs very simply can be constructed like this, or they can be rotated um, as well. And I'll explain why, that, why you might want to do that. But simply, um, I've plotted the abundance variation of this particular species um, down the core by age. So this is the age of the, of the different samples along this axis. So this particular sample, which is at the, the bottom of the core that I looked at here, is about uh, 40 million years um, old. Um, and as you go through, you can see that it, it, it changes um, along there. Um, and here on this vertical axis is the abundance. Uh, so we can see that the abundance of this species goes up and down uh, in relation to age. So single uh, species plots like this can be useful in their own uh, right. But if you want to do more complex analyses, you will need to employ a statistical or numerical technique such as principal components analysis, uh, factor analysis, correspondence analysis, and also detrended correspondence analysis as well. And there are others, but those are examples which um, common statistical and numerical packages uh, will should have and enable you to use your data to interpret it in that way. And what those um, numerical techniques allow you to do is reduce this very significant data set which you will have um, created by analyzing the radial area down the core and reduce it to a few uh, manageable uh, factors if you like. And so factor analysis or principal components analysis will come up with um, these groups of species that perhaps may be related and tell, are telling you a similar thing about the paleo environment and about the paleo oceanography and paleo climate at a particular time. And so you can plot those factors or components down core instead of having to plot um, many tens of these species. And uh, micropaleontologists and paleoceanographers are using that um, quite, quite um, often and frequently. So that's an approach in which you can adopt to uh, tally up the data and import it into Excel for analysis.